Thank you for supporting the channel. Also sorry for any pics missing from this thread, it is pretty old and most of them got 404. Anyone interested in sharing the most scary, creepy, or paranormal experiences they have ever had? They can be inexplicable, or totally explained, but as long as they were scary at the time, it counts. I have a few to share myself, over the next few posts, hope someone else is interested enough to share a few as well. Also, scary picture thread. My first creepy experience occurred in my barn, I live on a farm. I had heard freaky stories about my barn since I was little, but never really believed them, the people sharing were my dad and my aunt, who are both liars. The first instance was that my dad and aunt were both in the barn one night, and with their backs turned, they heard a loud noise. They turned around to see a large feed bucket had somehow ended up on the other side of the room, and was rolling around, as if it had been thrown. A few years later, my aunt was alone in the barn at night, brushing a horse, and she heard a voice say you missed a spot. Rational explanation or not, that shit would scare the hell out of me, but again, she is an unreliable narrator. My personal experience happened in the middle of a bright damn sunny day. I walked into the barn, it was faster to go through it than around, and a box fan, see image, for cooling the horses was leaning against the wall. It was on and spinning fast, but as I walked into the barn it slowed to a halt, as if it had been turned off when I walked in. A moment later, I realized it was unplugged. This freaked me out, so I bolted back out the door, but the extremely heavy barn door slammed shut in my face. This is relevant because these busted ass doors dragged on the ground and had to be lifted to move, simple wind couldn't push them, and it wasn't a windy day. Needless to say, this freaked me out for years. None of the horse people were there at the time, and there was no one else home but me to have messed with the fan or the doors. Some have suggested that somehow wind draft spun the fan and slammed the door shut, but the fan was against a wall and the doors only moved in storm level winds. Haven't had any experiences since with that. My second experience happened when I was in high school. There is likely a rational explanation for this, probably involving weird ass frogs or something, but it scared the shit out of me at the time. In the mornings and evenings, I was in charge of feeding several bulls my dad was going to butcher after they were larger. When I did this task, I would walk around the main barn, yeah, I didn't mess with the barn anymore, pass the cow pen, walk to a different barn that stored the grain, then walk back to the cow pen and feed and water them. This particular morning, it was absurdly foggy, and it was still so early that the fog was a murky blue rather than white. Visibility was similar or even less than in this picture, though partly due to darkness. Shortly after I passed the cow pen, I heard in a gruff and distinctly human and masculine voice the words Bob White. They came from the opposite direction of the barn I was passing around, from the fields beyond a fence, I could see the fence, but nothing beyond it. Now, this is interesting. There is a quail called a Bob White, called such because its call sounds like the words Bob White, but there is a big difference between a bird call and a human voice. At first I was like WTF? But I continued walking. About 20 seconds later, nearing the second barn, I heard it again, Bob White. I was a little freaked, but I went into the other barn and felt a little better inside of it. With the grain buckets in hand, I left the barn and continued towards the cow pen. As I walked, I heard the same voice as before, only it said the word cobalt, like the metal. I pretty much ran the rest of the way, dumped the feed, and bolted back to the house. This story has developed a bit of a hilarious reputation amongst my friends, who jokingly refer to it as the cobalt monster. They often jest that it looks like the silver surfer, or the liquid terminator, but cobalt blue. In all likelihood, it was a weird frog croak. I really couldn't say. It was the creepiest time for that kind of stuff, and I couldn't see for shit. It's possible someone was messing with me, but I live in ass all nowhere, and it was about 5.30 am in the morning on a farm. We don't get pranksters, or even crime, the area is so secluded. Still, the story has grown to be fondly and jokingly remembered by myself and friends, and anytime something weird happens we say it was the cobalt monster. I lived in a poor apartment complex, may not have been the ghetto, but it was close. Fear was always a part of living there, but it was fear grounded in real dangers. Getting robbed, assaulted, and other such things. 
At least, it was until a few nights ago. Coming home late one night, I parked my car on the far side of the lot, next to the fence that ran the perimeter around the complex. Beyond this fence was an empty lot about 100 meters wide, and beyond that was wilderness. Large power lines ran through the empty lot and I had become accustomed to their hum. But it was that night I heard something else coming from the empty lot. A distant moan. Sounded as though something was in pain, and more animal than human. My body trembled at the sound, and every instinct told me to turn and walk home. But I couldn't, I had to investigate. Someone might be in trouble, I reasoned. I squeezed through a gap in the fence and gazed at the dark lot. Nothing there. The moan had grown louder now, and drowned out the humming of the power lines overhead. I listened for the moan and, legs already giving way, walked toward the source of the noise. Still nothing in the lot, I glanced back towards the fence already a good distance away. Continuing on, I listening closely to where that noise was coming from. Then I found the source of the moan. But there was nothing there, still. The noise was loud enough to be deafening, and yet it seemed to come out of nowhere. And then it started getting softer. No, that wasn't right. It was moving further away, towards the tree line of the wilderness. As I walked, the moan would get louder until my ears rang. When I stopped, it would keep moving towards the wilderness. Something was leading me there. My legs had become jelly at this point, and taking one step was an enormous task. Head screaming from the noise, heart racing, and guts turning in on themselves. I was frightened. About 10 yards away from the trees, the moaning stopped. I scanned the wilderness for something, anything. It was dark, and obscured by the trees, but I saw something. It looked like a person laying on their back with their knees high in the air, their head twisted back, glowing eyes staring off into nothing. This thing was pale, and looked very dead. Its head turned to me with a sickening crack, and just screeched. It shuffled quickly, but I did not see where it was going. I turned around and sprinted as hard as I could back towards the fence, the screeching getting louder as whatever it was gave chase. I didn't even dare look back, I needed to put all I had into getting back through the fence. When the screeching became deafening, I nearly crashed through the gap in the fence. The screeching halted. Whatever it was did not try to go beyond the fence, it just stared at me through the gap. The gentle hum of the power lines filled the silence. Eventually, the thing turned and left. After a minute of laying in the parking lot, I got up and started walking home, in the distance I could hear faint moaning. Child Anon. Can't sleep, not uncommon for me. Wander house in dark, pretend to be ninja. Bored but anything I do will make noise slash light. Hear voice in street in front of house. Look outside. Strange men in street slash sidewalk, raised voices. They get in a fight. Mother lover gets shot. In the leg. His buddies get him into their car. Drive off. Shooter and friends remain, whoop it up. One of them spots me watching from the window. They rush up to the house. Aw. Oh. Shit. Flee to bedroom. They pound on the front door and threaten my family. Mom call cops. Dad gets gun. They all take off. I didn't learn a thing, kept looking out the windows at night. Just got more cautious about it. I think this is my last strange experience, and is a collection of a few, namely a few clairvoyant and or prophetic moments I've had. I'm sad I haven't had one in over a decade, but I appreciate them for what they are. Whether they are true, imagined, or twisted in my mind I won't be the judge of. But I will share them, and hopefully others can chime in with creepy experiences they have had. When I was in second grade, I awoke one morning, having just been having an incredibly short dream, only a few seconds long. In the dream, I was with my mother, sitting in a pair of orange chairs which were sitting in front of a small booth with a countertop with a woman behind it. My hand was on my head, and that was it. I awoke. Later that day, I was very excited. Two of my friends were coming over, a rare event to even have one. As I mentioned, I lived in the middle of nowhere, and went to a private school 30 minutes away, so most friends lived 25 to 50 minutes away. Get-togethers were uncommon. Either way, I'm not the aggressive sort, but my two friends were play wrestling in a nearly pitch black room in my basement. 
I edged towards a slightly lit area of the room, and mistaking me for the other friend, my friend Gary pounced in me, smashing my head against the corner of a TV stand, making a pretty big gash. I had to be taken to a hospital to get stitches, but when we got there, we went up to the reception desk, whereupon, my mother and I sat down in a pair of orange chairs in a small booth at a counter with the receptionist slash nurse on the other side. I was holding a cloth to my head at my mom's instruction. That was the only time I had any type of prescience, and I'm sad that it only happened once. I had two other situations in which I was aware of some information that I had no way of knowing. The first was slightly more impressive, to me, the second less so. In the first, I went with my little sister and mom to see a play at my sister's K-8 school. I had gone to the same school, but was in high school at the time. One of the girls in the play was a blonde-haired girl, 7th or 8th graders were the only ones allowed in the plays, I had never seen before, my sister later informed me she had transferred in during the 7th grade, so I had no overlap with her. At one point, my mom asked do you know who that girl is? About the blonde-haired girl. Without knowing how, my mind immediately jumped to the name Samantha Weaver. My mom then said that is Samantha Weaver's sister. Now, to explain this. Samantha Weaver was a girl who went to the same school, and was in my class. We were classmates in kindergarten through second grade, but she and her family moved to England, and I never saw her again. Her sister was young enough that she would have been three or four, and I was not friends with Samantha, nor did I know she had a sister, who never went to the school until I had graduated. In fact, Samantha or her sister would be the last person to be there, as I was still of the belief that she was in England, she was not. She ended up being there that night at the end of the play. Still, I'm not sure how I could have made the connection. How could I have seen a 12 to 13 year old girl and instinctively know she was related to a 7 year old girl I hadn't seen in 10 years, nor cared about at the time? Maybe it was just an unprecedented moment of deduction, but I couldn't rationally see how I made the connection, the only thing they had in common was hair color. So I either had some sort of extrasensory moment, or I had a freak incident of flash insight that worked on a subconscious level. Both options are weird enough that I value them as strange. The other, way less impressive, to me, instance of knowing something I shouldn't know, happened around the same time. I had just recently begun using AIM, and I had only 5 or 6 IM friends at the time. One night, I receive an IM from a name I had never heard before, the name was just random letters with no significance. The person said hello, then asked if I knew who it was. I really had no clue, but I somehow knew it was a kid from my high school who went by Omara, his last name. He had gotten my IM from another friend, and neither he nor my friend had told me that he would IM me. I had no way I could have known who he was, and I wasn't expecting it either. After the hospital dream, but before I was in high school, my grandmother told me, and confirmed by my aunt, not the lying one with the horses, one on a different side of the family, that she used to have some unwanted ESP powers. Apparently, she had a human caller ID ability, and could always guess who was calling. She had a tendency to make accurate prophecies about things that would happen to the family. At some point, another aunt and uncle went on a vacation together, and she had a vision that they would be seriously hurt. Apparently, this was before I was born, they were in an accident and both hospitalized. My grandmother said she hated that she could see these things, and prayed for a week that she would lose the power, and it went away. So if ESP is real and genetic, I guess she had it and rejected it, and I had an inkling of it, but it never developed and fizzled out as I aged. A shame, as I would love that shit, but I haven't had anything since the two high school incidents, I'm 26 now. Hope someone else has more to share. I think I'm all tapped out on paranormal and scary. Might be able to keep up with some more pictures though. I guess I'll contribute. When I was 5 years old my mother and I moved into a new house, we moved a lot in those days because of various financial reasons and such, but at this particular house we both felt uncomfortable and uneasy most of the time. I was often waking her up in the middle of the night, because of recurring nightmares of a little girl crying, and dogs barking. This went on for a few weeks, until one day my mom was having lunch with our new neighbors for the first time, while I was at school. She told them about the recurring nightmares, and they revealed something horrible to her. Apparently, 
the last tenants of the house had a small girl and several rather vicious dogs on chains. But one day they inexplicably came unleashed and mauled the girl as she was playing on the porch, maiming and killing her. As you can imagine we didn't stay there much longer after that. Well, a lot of weird shit happened to my family in our former home and in our street back in Mexico City. I'll start with one of the shortest things I can remember. My parents were having problems, with my dad gone for long periods of time because of his job campaigns and shit, weeks even, this resulted in my mom staying up late almost on a daily basis alongside the maid to keep her company. Sometimes she would let us stay up with her until midnight. One of those nights the maid and my mom were smoking by the window around 2 in the morning, my bro and I were horsing around in the room with them, when we hear my mom say. Hey, who's that lady across the street, she's been sitting there for quite a while. We look outside the window and true enough, across the street below the street lamp there's this lady with a shawl covering her face sitting on the pavement, you could see nothing of her face as if there was a void of darkness where her face should have been. The maid shrugs her shoulders and comments jokingly how it could be a spirit, we as kids get uncomfortable at the notion. Then my mom actually freaking calls out to the lady across the street. Good evening. Are you alright? The lady answers saying that she's fine. Do you need a place to stay, because if you don't have one you can stay with us for the night since it's already quite late. No, I'm quite fine, thank you. I am waiting for someone they should be here any moment now she says. Okay, if you need anything don't hesitate to come. My bro and I are shitting bricks, my mom freaking invited what could have possibly be in our little minds a ghost to stay with us. The maid asked why she'd done that, my mom simply said that it was out respect to the souls roaming the night. The lady stayed outside until we went to bed and ever since then while I was at the house I hesitated to look outside the window past midnight out of fear of seeing something I shouldn't during those hours of the night. This happened to me last Friday. Apologies for my bad English and storytelling. I was sitting on my computer, with the windows tilted, because it was a hottest night, even though it was pretty stormy. At around 2 a.m. I started to hear some weird sounds outside. Somehow like an almost dying cat that was stuck somewhere. Now I was kinda worried, because my cat was outside that night and I thought maybe it got hit by big branch that broke because of the storm. I opened the window and looked outside, checking if I could see anything in the woods next to my house. It was too dark to make something out, so I called out for my cat. In response the sound grew louder. That made me even more worried for my cat. I grabbed my reliable flashlight and went outside. Standing at the edge of the forest I called out for my cat again, to make out where the sound was exactly coming from. The whining started again. It sounded like it was about 40 feet away from me. I pointed my flashlight at the source of the sound. All I saw were two big eyes reflecting the light. The eyes were way too far above the ground to be a cat, and at first I thought it was just a deer. But as it started to walk towards me the sound grew louder. Startled, I ran back towards my house. As I reached the parking lot I turned around to see what the hell that thing was. I was just in time to see it on the edge of the woods, where I just stood, walking back into the forest. Ops pick somehow reminded me of it, except for those claws, it was skinny, had pale skin, was completely bold and walked on all four. The day after, Saturday, I was once again at home, playing some Minecraft with the windows tilted. It was little past 1 a.m. when that weird sound started again, except this time it sounded like it was barely inside the woods. I simply closed the windows, put on my headphones and ignored it for the rest of the night. I haven't heard that sound since, but it still creeps me out, thinking about it. One night back when I was like 6 or 7, the neighbors were having a campfire, and everyone was around there talking and playing. So we were playing base tag, which basically devolved into hide and go seek at this point, and it was dark as hell, so I was laying on the hill staring at the stars, when suddenly my view gets blocked by a disc, which is hovering and heading south. I watched it while shitting bricks as it slowly flew out of sight over the church. I will say that there are no air force bases near my town, being that this is Michigan I'm talking about. 
I once encountered a strange creature similar to the Mothman, however I don't think it was considering I live in Indiana, not Point Pleasant, Ohio. It was humanoid with a large wingspan, about 4 to 5 feet across. It stood about 7 or 8 feet tall with baseball-sized piercing, shining red eyes. I saw it when I was on a night walk by a small neighborhood park. It flew into the trees and watched me. At first I thought it was my imagination, so I kept moving, but when I arrived home and lit up a cigarette, I saw it in my neighbor's cow field. Crawling towards me. I ran inside and for two hours it went around my house looking through my windows. My cell was dead, and I didn't have a home phone, so I couldn't call the cops. Okay, this is going to be a little long. It was about two years ago, me and my brother were watching Boondock Saints. It was midnight, and we kept hearing my mom crying, followed by my uncle trying to calm down. My mom was an alcoholic, and she often had some weird moments, so I wasn't bothered by it. But it got increasingly worse. She started getting really loud, until the point of where she was screaming. I was in a state of total shock. My brother thought it was a brilliant idea to check what was going on. Pick related, they're weepers, from Dishonored, they give me the creeps. We slowly walked out of the room, and my mom was just freaking crying, and screeching, it was terrifying. My brother asked what the hell was going on, and my uncle just kept saying we just have to take your mom to the hospital. She was literally wailing my uncle every time he came near her. She kept rubbing her arms too, unnecessary detail, but it stuck in my head. Me and my brother just sat there and watched, until finally, my mom just kind of looked at us. She stopped crying, she put her arms down, she just stopped. She screamed, and freaking hauled ass towards us. My brother shoved me and we ran so goddamn fast. My brother had to slam the door, and lock it, and we jumped out of our window and ran. We ran up the street, and we sat there for a little bit. We had no idea what the hell to do. To make it worse, it was raining, and there was thunder and shit. We decided to go to our friend's house, let's call him Jamie. He sat out with us for like, 20 minutes. My brother and him smoked a few cigs, and we decided we would go back. It was a good 10 minute walk, and we were home. We walked home and it was as if nothing even happened. I slowly made my way to my mom's room, because I was so freaking scared, but yeah. I walked in, and she was just sitting on her bed crying. I asked her what happened, and she said she doesn't remember. She told me it was a seizure, but I knew that was bullshit. She asked if she did anything to me, and I told her she chased me like a freaking maniac, and it just made her cry more. To this day, she is convinced it was a seizure, but I know for a fact that it wasn't. Alright, for the sake of slash x slash. My first encounter with a ghost, most likely a slightly malicious spirit, probably a poltergeist. In high school, when I was 15, two of my buds came over and we played some video games at my house on a Friday night. The next day, one went to work and did his thing, and the other invited me to his house for the night as his parents would be gone and we would have the place to ourselves to play Guitar Hero and real guitars as loud as we wanted to. That day, he warned me that his house was haunted, and I completely and utterly did not believe a word of it, as I had zero belief in spirits walking the earth. I dismissed what he said as an obvious mistake, and assumed the house would be slightly rickety and settling in on itself. Well, that night came along, and my mother dropped me off at his house out in the country, in a place called Mission Valley where old wars had been fought between Mexico and Texas. The house was of normal size, and wasn't too old even, maybe built around the 40s or 50s. We kicked off the night in his room playing some multiplayer guitar hero, alone in his house. There were shoeboxes above his TV on the TV stand, and quite randomly, one fell off and landed on my shins, then my feet, and then the floor. Oh ooh, it was a ghost I said, followed by nah it was probably just the fan moving it around. As I looked up at the fan, I realized it was not moving at all, and in that particular moment I realized just how still it was not only in the house but outside of it as well. It was like a dead spot for the wind, with stale heat and humidity festering the air. In that moment, 
an inkling of theory came to my head that something was not right about the house, but I dismissed it and carried on. Time went by, and unbeknownst to me, he would be talking on the phone with his girlfriend slash friend for a decent chunk of the night, leaving me alone often. He was in his kitchen down the one hall of the house, and I was in his room eating a bit of cake. As I sat there on his bed munching, my gaze landed on the Guitar Hero controller leaning on his TV stand, and quite appropriately, as if it were watching and intensely awaiting my reaction, it moved a solid two inches in front of the TV. I shit myself, put down my fork, and got the freak out. In that order. I told my friend what I had seen, and his only words were I told you so dude. I told you before you came. After this, nothing happened for a while. We hung out, watched some TV on the bigger screen in the living room, when suddenly, he said what's that smell? Do you smell that? And then got up, and straight bolted for the front door, and I mean he was halfway gone to the damn moon, before I realized what he was doing and where he was going and why he was leaving. At this point, I was stricken with panic and my most primal instincts were yelling, telling me to stay the freak out. We stood on his road for a while looking at the house and talking about it. What the hell was that man? Why did you suddenly run, it really freaked me out. I said. I smelled a bad one. I've always heard you can smell a really bad one. It smelled like pure burning garbage, and I knew we had to get out of there. At first I was slightly confused and thought he was joking, that it was all a big joke and there were fishing lines around the room with him being the maestro behind it all, and that he had just farted and made it seem like a ghost joke or her her. But as the night continued, I would only begin to fathom the monstrosity of a malevolent spirit that wants you to feel fear, wants you to know it is there, and feeds off of this energy. As it snowballs out of control. The night continued on. I was paralyzed with fear most of the night, but something was beckoning me to stay. Something in me had to know, the strongest thread of curiosity stricken in my head, just what else this thing could manifest and make happen. We tried watching TV and listening to music, to no avail. The TV channel would switch randomly and keep going up 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 and up. Hit zero and start over again. Both remotes were visible, for the satellite and the TV, so neither of us pressed anything. The TV was just pure berserked, static and channels galore. Eventually, it stopped. My friend got up, and looked at the ceiling fan in the living room. He reached up and touched it, and it immediately came to a halt. There was no electricity running through it, it was just moving all along on its own, for the past 15 to 30 minutes. The door to his parents' room behind the couch in the living room creaked shut while we were in there, and both of us gave it one glance. And quickly resumed watching TV. Back in his room, we both saw a shadow float up behind his guitar amp in the corner of the room, and then ever so silently back down. I was the first to look in that direction, and he then said. You saw that too? At which point I shit myself for the second time, because I thought it was my imagination again. It turns out, they don't like to be ignored, and will manifest in the corner of your vision, only to silently observe you and then float back away into the ether. Later in the night, my friend is on the, house, phone with some chick from school, talking about ghosts and stuff. The call gets messed up, we can't hear her saying anything, we dismiss it and hang up. A few moments later, on his, cell, phone, he gets a random call from an all zero number, and then gets a voicemail. The voicemail was a recording of both him and our friend on the house phone, as if the cell phone could have been a third party and recorded it all. The night continued on even more, curiosity controlling me, preventing me from calling home to mommy and getting the nope out of there. Whatever it was, it was sentient. It knew things. It knew what to do to you to freak you out the most. My friend said the night I was there was the worst it had ever been in his entire life, as only three or four things had happened to him before this night including a CD sticking to the ceiling that was in his backpack, a beer cap flying around his room, music playing by itself the same song on the stereo, Set Me Free Your Heavens Alive by Lacuna Coil was on repeat during the night I spent there, all on its own doing, creepy AF, and things happened to his mother as well sometimes. She would feel it lay down in the bed next to her, or try to push her down into the bed harder at night to the point of her not breathing right. I showered, and it lifted my wet hair straight up into the air. I'm telling you right now, whether it is my bad shittiness or whether it was psychokinesis or whether it was a sentient thing, my hair stood straight up briefly in the shower. And at that point I nearly broke down, 
but I just got out of the shower and ran half naked into his room and told him I was through with coming back here. I tried to sleep, but they physically moved the tent like sheets that were on top of my feet, and I could feel their presence. Forever pacing around the bed. Except, that the whole being touched by something invisible thing wasn't even the worst that could have happened, or the worst that did happen. You listen to me right now, slash x slash. If there's one thing you take from my story, it's that you do not point at a goddamn ghost when you see one. You point, it's like a freaking beacon, it's like a vacuum tunnel that draws them into you, it's an open invitation for them to get into your head and learn what they need to do next. Yeah, I saw one all right. It was white and pretty short, only a few inches above the kitchen counter. I was at the beginning of the hall, 15 feet from the kitchen, 15 feet from my friend's open door when I saw it. I pointed at it, and had a brief realization that I just done completely goofed, because something made me aware that it was aware of me being aware. I slowly turned around and walked to his room when. Well, what can I say, but the hair stood up on the back of my neck and I felt its malice penetrate the room way way too suddenly, I felt it rush at me from beyond the grave, from the kitchen, it was like it ran at me full force in an attempt to. Do something. Needless to say, I felt this, and bolted for his room where I slammed the door behind me and felt safe for some damn reason. Anyway, that's the scariest moment of my entire life. Don't freaking point at them slash x slash. A few other minor things happened that night, but only stuff like muffled footsteps when it is silent, and electrical switches being switched on and off. Bit of a PS, I went back there on three or four different occasions, quite a while after the initial first time. Nothing really happened. My friend even had an Ouija board over there that we all screwed with, and apparently he found out its name was Wanda. I even tried to Ouija the spirits, but we got no results with 5 plus people trying that night. To this day, I'm not quite sure if there is any rational explanation for any of it, but I wish to God there was and that it was presented to me. Late 90s. Michigan. Living in 1800s farmhouse as a kid. It's early February blizzard has been going on for a few days. Power has been out for two days. Wind whistles just right on old wood siding, it's a full moon and yard light is out. I noticed how eerie it was, I walk down to the kitchen and hang around for a minute looking around and looking out the window above the sink. After a minute I hear something outside that sounds like someone saying hey dude I then proceed to fast walk back upstairs and grab a bow thinking it would save me from a hell sent monster, eventually I fall asleep. That is all. I used to live on this piece of property owned by this woman, and there were about five houses on the property, surrounded by about 40 acres of woods. There was also the foundation of a house that was never finished in the woods. This property had apparently been in the woman's family for a long time. Although there were people living in most of the houses, there was one that wasn't occupied. This was the house that the landlord and her family had lived in. It was a pretty big house, with an in-ground pool next to it, like your typical community pool. So one day, my friends and I were walking around the property, and we come up to that house. All of the curtains were closed shut, except for one window, which looked into the dining room. Looking into it, I could see that the table was set, as if dinner was about to be served. However, there appeared to be a solid inch or so of dust accumulated on the plates. Nothing too scary here but a bit eerie nonetheless. There was also a lake on this property, with an island in the middle, and a bridge leading to the island. In the middle of the island, there was this huge concrete slab, which was definitely covering some kind of hole, or something along the lines of that. On top of the concrete was a giant boulder, with no explicable reason as to why it was there, or how it got there. I could only reason that it was there to keep whatever the concrete slab was shut. There were also a bunch of shacks scattered around throughout the woods, with a bunch of creepy looking tools inside of them. I swore the place was built on an Indian burial ground, because countless times I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of some sort of Indian chanting, and children yelling, sounded like they were playing some sort of game, in some foreign language. One night I woke up hearing heavy footsteps coming from upstairs, too heavy to be any sort of animal. The only problem with that, there was no upstairs, it was a ranch house. There was a fenced-in garden next to our house, which is about where I would hear the children from. The whole garden got the same amount of sunlight throughout, yet for some reason one spring, 
there was one corner of it that kept its snow well after everything else around had melted. I also had more nightmares while living there than I have ever had anywhere else. Nightmares that included demon-type creatures, zombies, possessed family members. These nightmares all took place on the property grounds, and were all exact replicas of real life, not altered like typical dreamscapes. I'm sure everything in that place had a logical explanation, but goddamn was that one creepy place to live. Google Maps link if anyone's interested. Alright I'll contribute, but this story probably won't be very interesting. 15 years old. Homeschooled for the past 2 years, complete hermit. Live upstairs away from my family. Asleep, light turns on. Wakes me up. Nobody in my room. Flash forward 2 weeks. Asleep, lights turn on. Wakes me up. Nobody there. TV turns on. No remote no chance of turning it on on my own creeps me out go downstairs and eat a popsicle sleep on the couch that night flash forward five months leave home to live with my uncle flash forward two years move back in with my parents to start my senior year in high school talking to my mom one day about the weird shit that used to happen when i lived upstairs at the old house my parents had moved to a new town at this point her eyes get wide as hell. Ask her why she's so shocked. She tells me this. That's creepy. This one night I heard walking upstairs, but nobody was up there. Later that week, I woke up in the middle of the night because I heard your TV on. Went upstairs to turn it off, then later that day asked your father if he had turned it on. He said he didn't. That he never turns on the TV upstairs. Then. The creepiest thing that happened was, one night Gabriel, nephew, three years old at the time, was standing at the end of the steps, should have included this but the stairs are surrounded by wall, so unless you're standing right at the end of the steps you can't see upstairs, he was watching something for a while. Then he said hey Nana, who's that? And pointed upstairs. I went to look and there was nobody there. Then he said where did she go? Over a year ago, me and an ex-friend were at a friend's house, in the middle of the country. We decided to just freak around, and go upstairs with no lights on. We were bored as freak and decided to do some kind of hardcore hide and seek shit or something. In my friend's bedroom upstairs, he has this mirror standing in front of a corner, which is right by a window showing the backyard and all the crops, etc. My ex-friend hid behind the mirror, and while he was hiding, my other friend, let's call him TK, we're looking for him in this hall a couple rooms away, to get to the room with the mirror, you have to get from hall into a storage type room, then there's a doorway into the bedroom. We started to walk toward first doorway that leads to the storage room. Then we saw a head peeking around the corner looking at us. We didn't shine the flashlight on it, but we thought it was him, then it drew back really fast. We asked if it was him, but he was behind the mirror. There's no way he could have gotten from the doorway to behind the mirror about 20 feet away so quickly, and without creaking the very loud floorboards. I only have this one, but it starts that my bigger brother Phil had started working late nights a few weeks before, and he was also a raging alcoholic, which is not a good combination. Me and Phil shared rooms, so one night I wake up suddenly, at 3.12 am, it was absolutely silent and my eyes were adjusting to the darkness, when all of a sudden, I see Phil sitting up and looking at me the entire time. I froze, then I looked at his expression, his eyes and mouth were as wide as possibly open, like the picture related. He looked absolutely frightened, I started saying, Phil, what the hell, then he did something terrifying. His face stayed the same but then his head like robotically moved left, then a sharp 90 degree up, at the ceiling. Once he did this he started screaming and then yelled, what is that what is that, at this point I was ready to shit myself. I then ran to to turn on the lights, and then I bitch slapped him hard twice. When he came to all, he said was what the hell, let me sleep, and acted like nothing happened. Long story short I never shared a room with him again. Also, the picture is what he looked like. So. 
One day my uncle finds an HTC Evo phone on the street and gives it to me. I'm like cool whatever thanks. I still have it to this day, didn't activate it or anything it's just here. But anyway, I turn it on and mess with it then leave it in my living room charging and forget about it. The way my house is set up is there's four rooms in a U shape. You walk in there's my living room, keep going there's a pointless room where I keep my fridge, records and chess table, keep going it's my bathroom and finally it's my bedroom. My living room and bedroom end up being right next to each other without immediate connecting doors and both have windows facing the same direction. Seeing as this was a summer night I had both my bedroom and living room windows wide open. I went to sleep that night after an uneventful day. Around 3.30 or 4 am I awoke to the scariest sound in my life blaring outside my window. An air raid siren. I immediately jumped up and the first thing that came to my mind in that split second was not a tsunami, not a tornado but what I knew was a long time coming. Zombies. Somehow at the core of my being I was absolutely sure the zombie apocalypse had begun and I was caught completely unaware since I'm not some doomsday prepper guy from the deep south with a basement full of rifles and stockpiles of food. So I sat there for a couple of minutes trying to decide my move, all the while this terrible siren kept going off in the hills outside my house. I decided eventually, that I had to make sure my only loved one was safe, first and foremost. That would be my mom. So I got dressed with the best gear I could find, grabbed the only reasonable weapon I had, which was a bat, and got ready for the ensuing zombie battle, that would undoubtedly unfold as I tried to make it to my mom's house, to ensure her safety. So from the time I woke up to the air raid siren, to the time I exited my bedroom was a total of about 15 minutes. 15 minutes of prepping myself for battle and going through my mental encyclopedia of zombie knowledge, stemming from movies, books, and the internet to make sure I had the best chance of survival. So I step out into my living room and I see that stupid cell phone going off loud is held to a preset alarm of an air raid siren. Who the hell wakes up to an air raid siren? The damn thing was going off so loud that it was sounding off through my living room window, echoing in my backyard, and sounding back through my bedroom window making it sound like the entire city was under attack. At least from where I was. I know what you're thinking, I'm stupid. What a stupid mistake to make, why even tell this story? Well, I guess you can't really get the meaning of it unfortunately unless you were me. For those brief 15 minutes I was in full on zombie survival horror mode. I knew what the apocalypse felt like. I knew what the end of all humanity felt like. It was a terrible feeling but an exciting one just the same. I've never felt such a rush. But I still freaking hate air raid sirens. B12. Living in a two-story house. Sitting alone upstairs. Hear a click and lights turn off. Hear mother's voice say it's okay, the fuse must have broken. Stay where you are while I go and fix it. I sit still, say okay. 20 minutes pass after lights turn on again. Door opens downstairs. Mother has just come home carrying shopping. I ask her where she went. She says she's been shopping for the last two hours. Never freaking slept the same way again. I can confirm whatever turned the lights back on was not my mother because the voice was just slightly off. It had a slightly gritty, metallic undertone. Anyone on slash x slash had a similar experience? A couple of years ago I was falling asleep late at night in my room, everyone else in my family was asleep except my older brother who was on the computer. My room was dark, except for some moonlight shining through my window, my bed was on the opposite side of the room from my door, and the window was next to the door. I heard a tapping on the window, I can't remember the pattern but it was distinct and it continued for a couple of minutes. I was frozen with fear, and I couldn't make any sound. I finally was able to struggle out of my paralysis, and was all sweaty, and my throat was sore from trying to call for my brother. I ran out of the room and slept on the couch for a week after that. Also it doesn't help that I was in the process of drawing a scene on my wall, of a girl, struggling with some invisible bonds, and she ended up scaring the shit out of me and my siblings, because her face held so much emotion and she watched over me at night, I couldn't sleep with her there and I quit working on the drawing and I couldn't erase it either. My brother believed it harbored demons. And we saw a tall fuzzy black form every couple of years in our basement. Okay I'm gonna chime in here. 
I was about seven playing with Hemmons in my room with my friend Tom who lived four doors up the road from me. My dad was at work, mum was a housewife then so she was in. Anyway Tom had to go home for some reason so he left, I didn't see him out I just stayed in my room happily mucking around with my action figures. A few minutes elapse, ten at the most, when I hear a knock on my, closed, bedroom door. I get up straight away, Tom and I were playing sat right next to my bedroom door and I hadn't moved since he left, and opened the door and there's no one there. Now, the thing is, my dad used to knock on my door by standing on the stairs and reaching through the iron, balustrade, things to tell me dinner was ready or whatever, see photo. But it wasn't his knock, he had a strong policeman's, he's not a copper, though, knock but this one sounded, somehow, sloppy, it petered off like there was no power behind it at all, I think it was three or four raps. Anyhow it can have been more than a second from me hearing the knock and getting up and opening the door. I went through every room in the house and no one was in any of them I found my mum outside in the back garden putting the washing out. I asked her if she'd seen Tom come back in, garden has unimpeded view of both front and back gates, when we had a back gate, and she said, no, why? I just saw him leave a minute ago. Now I dunno why but I wasn't particularly freaked out by this. Cut to years later, I'm 19 and talking to mom in the kitchen about freaky shit, she's sensitive and has had loads of experiences with ghosts, precognitive dreams, precognitive auditory hallucinations, all that stuff, and I tell her for the first time about the knock. She says oh that's funny we didn't want to tell you that an old lady died in this house, she owned it before us but I don't know which room she died in. But there's no weird or bad vibes in my room nor has there ever been, weird. Oh and Tom wasn't what you'd call a prankster but he did bullshit about little, stupid things, I don't think I ever asked him about the knock or if he was mucking about, I mean, I would have heard someone go down the stairs or something, and a 7 year old couldn't reach my door from those stairs anyway, or if I did, I've forgotten, oh the bathroom is right next to my room, that was the first place I checked and there's barely space to swing a cat in there let alone hide. For the past 7 months or so, I've been having repeating nightmares of the same dreams that take place in different places. There are two of them. The first one involves me usually in an empty field, surrounded by a barbed wire fence. It's usually foggy and dark and this being comes out of nowhere and starts to come towards me and it gets faster and faster. I can't run or do anything so it's awful. It hits me and I can actually feel the pain. The thing's glows a bright white, it's my height, 5 feet 9 and has solid black eyes. Anyway, I would be fine with this dream if it were just a nightmare but the creepy part is that I actually have been to the field before. It's a 15 minute walk from my house. The second dream involves me and three strangers in a large house. Two out of the three are almost always different but Terry's this one man stays the same. In the dream, we all go into separate rooms to do whatever and then a crazy man's laugh echoes through the house. All the lights turn off and you can just barely make out shapes. I'm always in the living room, sitting on the piano bench when this happens and I look out the window to find it's pitch black with only the moon. I hear thuds coming from everywhere in the house. Then all of a sudden, that man comes out of nowhere smiling an insane smile. He quickly reaches forward towards my throat as if to choke me, and I wake up immediately. I usually wake up around 2 am and can't fall back asleep. It's the same man in every dream and I have one of these two dreams every night. It's starting to scare me. In my teen years, I like to ride my bike, usually towards one of the nearby elementary schools, and sit alone on the swings while listening to music and thinking. Usually I did this at summer near twilight or after dark. My parents were divorcing, so I was going through some shit. I usually went to the closest elementary school, the one I went to as a kid. Its swings ran along an open dirt road that led back to cleared construction sites, and across the road was a subdivision, and usually a couple of houses had lights on. The swings faced the rest of the playground, and when I was on the swings, the school was to my left, with a huge parking lot. Generally a very wide open area, with lights from the houses and school. The swings themselves were a giant metal A-frame, with the swings in sets of three, and this set was about 15 swings long. Anyway, I'm sitting there, swinging away, and I'd been doing this for some time. It was a pretty still summer night, 
with the occasional light breeze. I usually sat in the second or third swing in the second set closest to the parking lot, as that was where I kept my bike. So I'm swinging, and suddenly I feel a shuddering through the A-frame and the swing chains, and over my music I hear the jangling of a swing, and I look around and see one middle swing in the next section swinging and jerking wildly, as if something had just jumped off. The rest of the swings were dead still. I had never seen anything like this in the months of hanging out here. Shitting bricks, I hopped off my swing, ran past the section with the moving swing, got on my bike and peeled the freak out. I didn't go back there after night for a while. Walking home late at night. Blackout. Come to and not know where I am. Still on a road but don't know which direction my house is. Panic. Trying to wave down passing traffic. No one stops. Head to someone's front door. Bang on their door like a madman trying to kill someone. Ten minutes later they come to the door. They tell me I am four miles out of town and I need to head south. Which way is south? Realize I sound totally bad shit. They tell me to leave. State cop arrives shortly after. Drives me home without handcuffs mace or getting shot with a taser. Missing time or what? True story. Any insight slash x slash? I remember when I was on my computer once, and the door to the hallway was cracked, while I'm staring at my computer in the corner of my eye, I see a man with a bald head, hair on his sides, and a red button strike shirt, I went to look up to see who was there, and he disappeared. A couple of months ago I talked to my grandmother about this, and said that was her brother named John who died one year and one day before I was born. At my old house our basement had an outside door that looked sort of like a barn door, and next to it was an identical door, leading to a mini basement, that was only accessible from the outside. We used the mini basement for storage, but we never went in there, cause it was just storing bullshit pool noodles and whatnot. One day I'm looking for something, I'm like 9 or 10, and I decide to check in there. I'm moving shit around then in corner of the room I see something moving slightly. I clear stuff out and go see. It was like, this freaking monster fungus thing that looked like a piece of lasagna. It was the size of a milk crate but about half as tall. The weird thing is it pulsing all over similarly to heartbeat. It had like the geysers all over and every time it pulsed out it would puff out smoke, probably spores, that dissipated almost instantly. Next to it, there was a box of suntan lotions and bug spray and shit that had leaked all over and under this thing. Pick related, what I thought it was. I go and get my stepdad, he's basically my dad though, to come see. He looks at it for about a minute with big eyes, then without a word he grabs a shovel and shovels it up. There's no trace of the thing on the ground, it was all in one piece. My stepdad then walked over to the woods, we live next to a forest, with the thing in the shovel. He not saying anything or looking at me. The thing is pulsing and smoking a lot faster, as if its heartbeat is increasing. The smoke shit isn't dissipating anymore either. My stepdad then chucks it in the woods, then, seemingly satisfied, he looks at me and says, wasn't that weird? We go back inside and he just says to my mom that there was some mold in the basement thing, and they don't care. The next day my stepdad goes for a business trip which was planned, but he stays for an extra four days and never really says why. During this time two of our three cats go missing and we never see them again. To this day I have no freaking clue what this thing was. If you guys have any ideas, I love to hear it. I sometimes mention it to my stepdad, and he'll say stuff like oh yeah, that was pretty weird wasn't it, but he's always weird and alarms dismissive, and like bothered when I mention it. He tries to change the subject or avoid talking about it. I dunno man. I dunno. My creepiest experience was very recently. I walked outside one night at 1 a.m. and I heard the infamous hum. I was seeing heaps of videos posted all over YouTube about it here, and of course, interest in it dwindled, despite I was kind of a skeptic, I mean, why would the earth be groaning randomly all of a sudden? Until I heard it for myself. Chilled me to the bones it did. I wonder what it truly is. The other day after messing around with some occult stuff, 
I saw a red orb in my basement. The lights were all off, and I triple checked to make sure that A, it wasn't being caused by something physical in the basement, and B, it wasn't my eyes playing tricks on me. I can't explain that away as something normal. It would also get bigger as I looked at it. Be 15 and live in Britland countryside. Walking through woods as shortcut back from friend's house. Autumn so leaves are everywhere crunching underfoot. Get that usual feeling of being followed but my steps are making loads of noise. Stop walking and listen but don't hear anything but bird song. Continue walking crunch crunch crunch. Feel like something is wrong. Stop again, hear extra crunch when my feet aren't moving. Suddenly notice no bird song and woods are completely silent. Sprint at top speed for rest of way feeling something was right behind me. Burst out of woods into main road. Suddenly bird song erupts again and everything feels normal. I have a few stories I can post. I'll probably put them in separate posts because they're not really related to one another. This isn't really paranormal, but it really freaking creeps me out. My father is a veteran of the Vietnam War. He was wounded by a grenade. He has some problems with addiction and he never talks about the war with me, and there was one time, maybe a year ago, that he even got really upset when another veteran was talking about it. I think it's safe to say that whatever my father saw slash did over there really messed him up. He really likes to watch war movies, despite all this. Almost every time he does, though, the following night he ends up tossing about having terrible night terrors. The worst part is that he moans, almost cries out. It sounds like he's dying. What can he possibly be seeing in his mind? What memories get stirred up in his nightmares? It's really unsettling to think about, and the sound of him crying out never fails to chill me to my freaking bones. Live in Northern BC. Live in crappy apartment with my mom, only child. Behind apartment is a wide space where another apartment would be eventually built, and behind that was a big ass field. Mom told me to be careful when my friends would go there because there's really deep trenches hidden in the grass. In the winter it was even worse cause the trenches are lined with ice and impossible to climb out of. So one night I wake up suddenly and it's like 4 AM, and I hear this creepy screaming noise that sounds like a horse. No horses here. Happens again and again on and off for the next few weeks. Always the sound of a horse yelling. Ask mom about it, maybe I need to go to the shrink. All she knew is that a long ass time ago there were farms here that had horses, and every winter some would escape and fall in the trenches, unable to get out, and then they'd starve or freeze to death. In some cases if it rained the water would freeze and their heads would stick out. Pick related. Common problem back then. And then she said that if me and my friends went far back enough to the field, which she would bitch slap me if I did, we'd see the remains of all the horses that died in the trenches. Not really scary but freaking creepy when I look back on it. But the horse yelling was the worst, because no one knew what to do about it so I just moved into a room without a window so I couldn't hear them. Oh, and we moved a few years later, and apparently there were a lot of things that died in the fields, not just horses but like foxes and dogs and shit would get trapped in the ditches. There were a group of people that went up there to see, if they could find anything, and they apparently found like a shit ton of dog skellies. So we moved the freak out of their cause my mom didn't want me to slip fall and die. Again, this isn't paranormal, but it's kind of weird. As a child, I was really unhealthy and I often got sick. I got strep throat nearly every winter and I was taking different medications off and on for allergies, sicknesses, whatever. One medicine even made me unable to walk and I had to crawl to my mother to tell her what was wrong. Sometimes, I would have fever dreams, and I even remember having distorted senses while being awake, when I was sick enough, mostly I would feel like things were fluctuating between moving, and sounding too fast, and then too slow, it was really weird and it was terrible. One night I was really really sick. My mother was caring for me while I was in bed, and eventually I sat up. I had an intense vision. I say vision instead of dream only because I wasn't really asleep. There was a battlefield, and things were mostly white in color, with arrows flying from one side to the other. For whatever reason, this was horrifying, 
and I kept muttering things like please don't kill me and I don't want to die. My mother cried and tried to cool me down, and she later told me it was a pretty horrifying night. I still remember it fairly vividly, for whatever reason. B17. Going to bed. Something in my mind tells me to close my bedroom door before I sleep. Dog is sleeping against door, so I shrug it off and go to sleep. Wake up in a slumber. An entity speaks to me in my mind telling me to lie on my stomach, come to believe this is my grandmother's spirit for some reason. Roll over onto my stomach. Feel a force of weight on my lower back. Come to my senses and try to move. Paralyzed. Fight it, arch my back in resistance. Resistance is futile. Relax, wait 10 seconds then try to move. Everything is normal and I roll onto my back. WTF just happened. Go for a leak and I'm extremely weak. Time is 3 AM on the dot. Unexplained event to this day. Had over 100 experiences of sleep paralysis and visions of dark entities in my room at night since then. I was home alone one afternoon and my mom went out to get some groceries. I was playing video games in my basement and I could hear some murmuring and light footsteps upstairs. I thought my mother came back home so I went upstairs to greet her. I looked around for her everywhere and I couldn't find her. A bit spooked, I went to the bathroom. While I was in there, I heard louder footsteps and louder voices. It sounded like somebody giving orders or information. I live near where there were civil war battles and I have seen ghosts of soldiers in my neighborhood before. I got a story. When I was little like maybe seven I had this doll, really creepy and one night I was sick of it. I started thinking about getting rid of it and went to sleep. I woke up at like 2 and heard someone in the bathroom, now I was an only child and my parents slept upstairs. I went over and froze. There was a marker on the ground with the marker, ink thing taken out. I ran back to my room and fell asleep with the sheets over. Here comes the scary slash weird part, slash x slash brothers, the doll had marker on its fingers that was probably the most terrifying thing ever. Holy shit. Something very similar happened to me a few years back. Still can't go outside at night quite the same. One night at around 4 am I'm just sitting there on my computer with the window open because it was nice outside. Just listening to some country on Pandora when I hear an unusual sound. I turn down my music and hear something like an owl or a cat and one of my chickens screeching. Behind my house is a couple of acres of orchards with trees we planted a long time ago and a chicken coo on the far north side, had to shoot a few coyotes the year before that so I grab my .22 Magnum and my handheld spotlight and head outside. When I quietly close the back door behind me it's dead silent. No crickets or anything. That on its own made me uneasy. So I creep towards the north side of the property, spotlight off, but level. Then I heard the sound again, not more than 30 yards from me. I tactically shit my pants, and turn on the spotlight in the direction that I thought I heard it and I could barely see is something shaped similar to the op, but larger with brownish pale, wrinkled skin and huge eyes, hunched over and blood all over its jaw under a small tree. It just sits up and looks directly at me, with those amber eyes. I scream like a bitch, and mag dump into the the thing missing all but one shot. It gets on all four and starts running at me. I drop everything and run as fast as I've ever run in my life to the back door, screaming my lungs out. Whatever it was, it was fast on my heels. I push it open and then slam it shut behind me locking it. Its nails slide to a stop on the concrete and tap back and forth, pacing near the door before running off again. I must have sat against that door for hours before getting brave enough to get up and walk back to my room. The sun was out now, so I grabbed my shotgun and headed out to take a look at things. All I found was my spotlight completely smashed, my handgun and a headless chicken. Screw whatever that thing was. When I was a kid I used to see an apparition in the apartment I grew up in. In broad daylight I would always run past the kitchen because every time I'd see a dark, human, shaped figure at the stove. My sister shared the same experience as well. About two years back, I moved back into the apartment to live with my father. 
Winter of this year, on a few different occasions, I woke up in a panic slapping at my walls because I started to see hand-shaped shadows, scurry behind a replica Basquiat painting, my sister gave me as a gift. I don't watch any superstitious horror flicks and don't delve much into this kind of thing in general but it's probably just all in my head. I posted this in another thread, but I thought it would be more relevant here. My fiancé and his brother found a creepy box when they were out curb shopping. It was full of cards, each different version of the death tarot card, what looked like a shriveled up human ear, a note that said my game, my rules and some dog tags or some military something that had my fiancé's family's last name on it. They brought it home and wanted to report it but everyone was too scared and disturbed by it they ended up dumping it somewhere. As a teenager, and an angsty one at that, I used to spend a lot of time taking strolls at night. I preferred the atmosphere, walking through old town, and seeing the lights, feeling the earth beneath my feet. I remember I was in about 10th grade when all of that changed. It was a really cold night, but I was cracking under pressure. Several of my friends had killed themselves in the past month, and my grades were falling fast. I picked up habits I'd never imagined myself picking up, like smoking, drinking, the typical stuff. It had been about a week since I'd had my last cigarette, and I was really stressed at home, my dad was giving me hell. So, I took a walk through Old Town. I remember, I was walking past an old cemetery, and I heard one of my recently deceased friend's voices, from beyond the fence. Being drunk, I was curious, rather than terrified. I decided to hop the fence, and as I straddled the thing, and began to swing my leg over, I felt an ice cold chill run down my spine. But then again, it was winter, in the dead of night, in the middle of nowhere's a scrack, Colorado. I stood amongst around 250 graves, the poor illumination from a streetlight about a block away barely giving me any visibility. I called out for my friend, and headed to the center of the cemetery. I really don't remember much, but I do remember a particular tombstone, then what happened after I passed it by. It was tall, and oddly shaped. It had engravings, and it looked very out of place. All I remember other than that, was walking past it, then feeling an utter sense of dread. I felt not as if I was in danger of dying, but that I was in the process of doing so. The light across the street exploded, and I blacked out. I woke up in my bed, and I have no freaking clue how I got back to my house, which is a full 14 miles from the cemetery I was walking by. The experience that stands out in my mind is an experience I went through when I was a young child. Prior to this happening my brother and I would often see technicolor, statusy human forms running across our doorway in the dead of night, most of the time they would just run by, but on occasion they would look into our room, that usually scared us shitless. But for a week prior to this story, they stopped appearing altogether. It was odd, they had been running from the office to my parents' room for two years. For them to stop showing up was even more unnerving than them appearing. Even so, my brother and I thought nothing of it and went to sleep. It was the middle of the night and I had woken up for some inexplicable reason. I thought I just had to pee, so I started to get up from my bed. As I did, I noticed something from the corner of my eyes, it was this fiery, almost hellish set of eyes emblazoned onto my shutters. There was a thick, sulfurous smell in my room to accompany the demonic image. I immediately bolted for the door, but I was paralyzed at the threshold of my room. I yelled for my parents for what felt like hours, but to no avail. I tried looking back at my brother but I felt beyond terrified, what if they aren't just eyes anymore? Went through my mind. I had woken up at 1.47 in the morning and it wasn't until dawn came at 5.58 that I could move again after which I promptly passed out. The next day I remember trying to clean up my bedroom and I looked at where the eyes had been the previous night. To my horror, they were scorched onto the surface of my shutters in a very pungent ash-like substance. This substance had stained the white shutters for a week before finally coming off. After that my parents, on a whim, decided to buy two kittens as family pets. In the rest of my time at that house, there were no more odd occurrences. For once, I actually have one to share. I'm not a believer in any of this stuff. I love a good story, and I love those who can spin a good tale, 
and slash x slash is a decent place to sift through the crap for some good ones. But for once in my life, I do have a real one. So I lived in a very bad part of Oakland, CA for about a year, during which I had partaken in some less than savory things, with some less than savory people. The worst of which had me fearing for my life for an entire day and a half. As always, I survived though and managed to undo all of the material damage it had caused me, money, pride, worrying about being killed, etc. What I didn't undo is what would happen at night, for weeks on end afterwards. I'm guessing it was PTSD, but I just don't know. The house I was renting a room in was a decrepit Victorian built in the late 19th century, I lived on the top floor. When I go to bed, the same thing would keep occurring, and freak did it scare me. I would wake up, hearing a deep and menacing voice call out, never said my name, I remember it addressing me, never remembered what it said though, only that it was usually very vague. One night, I saw a figure laying across from me, slept on a mattress slash bed springs at the time. It had a human form, I couldn't make out many details on it. Had human features, and the face, while vague, looked like it was burnt. It looked like it might have been a black male, but it wasn't entirely human. Then there were other nights, where I would see an amorphous cloud, cliché, I know, across from me near the wall. Each time, my heart would be racing, like I think he'll have a heart attack racing. It eventually all went away, while I lived there. Moved out of there in late May, will never go back. Any thoughts, or is it PTSD? I guess I'll share my experience. I don't really know what happened, though. Me and my sister were home alone, my brother had stayed at my dad's house, and my mom was at a bar. My parents were divorced, so they lived separately. Kitty me. With sister in her room. She tells me to go to turn off all lights in the house that we weren't using, massive thing out parents made us do. They gave huge shits about electricity bills. Go to my room, play on comp. A while later, my sister comes in. Anand did you go to mom's room? I said no, and she said that the light was on and the light controller was on the bed, when I knew I had placed it on the holder on the wall. Scared to shit, I go check and it was. Go back to room. Cry because I'm a massive fagaroni when it comes to paranormal. I do believe it was a prank my sister pulled, but she had never done anything like that before, and she wasn't laughing, or giving any hint that it might have been her doing. In fact, she looked as afraid as I did. I don't really have a story but there's this one fear that I have. I live in an apartment building, and there's another apartment building, 50 feet away in front of mine, parallel, meaning I can see the balcony slash windows of the building in front of me, and people living in the aforementioned building, can see the balcony slash windows of mine. Sometimes I fear that one day I'll be standing out on the balcony and see someone staring right at me out of a window across from me. I don't know why but the idea of someone watching me inconspicuously is just terrifying. Pick related. Taken from kitchen window. Okay, I'll bite. It's not as outlandish or insane as your guys either real or made up stories, but it's real and scared the shit out of me worse than anything ever has in my life, 21 now. Be about 7 I suppose, I go by grades in school, need to get out of the habit of doing that. 3rd grade, was a Wednesday, I remember I had swim class that day. Falling asleep in my room, lights off, box fan on high, so you know how that sounds. Brother, Ike 16 or 17, in his room, my mom in the living room on opposite end of the house. Falling asleep. You know just about to get to that point where sometimes you jolt awake because you think you're falling, but not there yet. All of the sudden, hear loud metallic clunk in the middle of room. Loudest noise I've heard at this point in my life. Start screaming horribly like a girl because of how scared I was. Light goes on, my brother and mom rushing into my room. What was that Anon? So scared and don't know how to explain at the time, all I can say was it hit me. Didn't want to be questioned because I couldn't explain it so made that up on the spot, young kids mind. To this day none of them knew what that noise was, apparently both heard it as well. God, 
I have no clue where to start on freakest experiences in my life, since I've pretty much lived a life of under death, I mean my parents died by the time I was 14, and my grandparents a year later. As well as cousins and friends. As well as I've nearly died so many times it's not funny. Also I may have lived literally everywhere in Minnesota and quite a few other places, so some of you may recognize me, I was that fat kid that always had weird shit happen to me. Here's an example of one of my close calls with death. In Chicago a couple years ago to go see a show at the House of Blues. Go take some buses to get there and end up in a particularly bad place of Chicago. Go grab food with my cousin. Get out of McDonald's after getting a McDouble and start to cross the street. Guy I driving on his motorcycle at about 60 miles an hour about a block away and he blows the red light. He literally goes full stop about 6 inches from me. I shit metaphorical bricks and my heart feels like it's in my esophagus beating at Mach 20. Guy has this utterly horrified look on his face. I look around and hear what sounds like a choir, probably with the best singing I've ever heard. What I mean by this is imagine hearing the entirety of Mozart's Requiem, and put the feeling behind it twentyfold and I didn't recognize the particular piece, but I knew it was in Latin. I get onto the bus that is by this point coming in. Music eventually goes away after 10 minutes or so. I can't make this up if I tried, I've looked since then to try figuring out what the freak song that was, I really want to know. Another one involves something that I got weirded out by, even though I got really sick, this may be the freakiest experience in my life, not the guy going into full stop. In Atlanta three years ago on the way due to Florida to get to Santa Maria Island for a vacation, with my aunt, uncle, and little brother. Stop at an Atlanta bread company, now for those of those not entirely in the know it's a great bakery place, that also sells food and has free Wi-Fi that isn't complete dicks. So I order a chicken sandwich with chipotle sauce on it. With baked potato soup. Now I keep seeing something in the corner of my eye and I can't quite put my finger on it. I eat my food. I immediately start throwing up chunks of something utterly red and like it just got inserted into sauce. I'm spewing a lot of this stuff out. It's like I'm a fountain of freshly made sweet sour chicken and I haven't had that in months. I look up and see this small girl with light brown hair with blood red tips, that's wearing a pure black hoodie, with skulls on it, and knee ripped jeans, you know what I mean. She just staring at me with the most weirdly intense stare I've ever seen. Just walks away during pain as day no sunlight whatsoever. As soon as she walks away I feel immediately fine. I think that woman was an asshole which who has it out for me for some reason. Next I'll talk about one of my old co-workers that pissed off an old gypsy crone and may have died for it. So working at a job I started in June. It was a retail store. So while me and this older gentleman who was working with me was restocking shelves, an older lady with Mediterranean skin walks over, and start rearranging everything, and was off with stuff in her pockets every time. This happens every day, for a good month, and eventually my older co-worker got extremely pissed off and basically had her either stop, or she will be removed from premises and perhaps banned. She starts talking about how in her caravan she was the matron of an old gypsy band, and she deserves much more respect, because she said she was his elder, even though this older guy's was around 78 at the time. She walks off muttering something that he couldn't quite overhear. Guy gets the manager, I was off in another area at the time so I heard this from him at the end of the shift. Two weeks later he has died from a sudden brain aneurysm. Quit this job about a month later because the boss was a dick, and the whole damn place may have been possessed as freak to the supernatural. What I mean, is finding shit like finding a book of the greater keys of Solomon, some guy leaving a grandmaster's mason bible, and some legitimately weird shit happened there involving stuff going missing all the time and stuff breaking down right before people use it. Last story, the story of the hyper radioactive lake. So one of the many places I lived in at one point was a place called Silver Lake, Minnesota, I'm not there now, but I did around the age of 13 to 14, anyways back to the story. This town was named after a lake that it literally borders, also called Silver Lake. Now extremely weird shit happens when anyone does anything to do with the lake. One guy's pants dissolved, another guy I saw personally shrink about 2 inches. One day I was on the way to school, and I see it there is a shadow in the water. Oh god what the hell dot jpg. This shadow is large, I mean the thing in the water is about 30 to 50 feet long. It looked kind of like a long neck something, or LNG tailed I really don't know. 
I threw a rock at the middle of the lake. The shadow moved closer. Nope. I run like hell, and don't look back. I probably moved a couple months later, but that was one of the last times I went near that lake. Every time I was there since that same shadow was there, in the middle of the lake, that exact shadow. Other things with me include what looked like shadowy people, what may have looked like translucent people at night, my personal encounter with what I'm pretty sure is a Nagalashi, or what you guys know is either an Eater of the Dead, or Skinwalker, my day when the moon went blood red, the sky having a giant pentagram over my church and what looked like chemtrails and the whole area going super foggy, and much more retardedness, I may stop when I'm more awake and story time all this crap for you, I'm not even some sort of monster hunter, it's just my life is messed up retarded.